All right, so check it out. There we go. Now we have all the stuff set up for the fuel. We have the dual fuel pump installed. We have the runs, we have the lines run. We have the nice solid Deutsch connectors wired up. It's gonna be a killer. I mean, it's monster, right? So we've got the 10 micron filter coming. That, that's the last thing to kind of finish off the, the fuel system. We have all the other stuff. We have the rollover valve coming from Holly. It's a, you know, it's just, it's got a vent and a rollover. So if the car rolls over, God forbid, fuel won't just pour out and burn me up, you know, because nobody really wants to get burned up. So there it is. Check it out. Beep, boop. Hey, thanks for, thanks for watching my videos. I really appreciate it. I really do. Have a great day. Let me know what you think. So there's the old tank. Let's see, that should go like that. Just want to make sure this is all perfect. Uh, oh. Four inch hole saw, that's what you need for this. So here's the big boy right here, right? So we got to drill a four inch hole and we set it in there. These little flanges make up the difference. I wanted to kind of find the, the best flat spot and I wanted to have it on the, on the driver's side because I'm going to run the fuel lines on the driver's side. Most people run them on the passenger side and run them on the driver's side because that's where my fuel pressure regulator is going to be. And we want to kind of keep it all in there, less fuel, less, less lines, all that kind of stuff. So tap it. All right, so after test fitting the pump, you can see it's a little bit high, so I knew I had to drop the pumps down. And in order to be able to do that much more, you've got to break those little supporting rods that hold that, that pump mount there. Uh, so you loosen them up and then you twist them out. They're kind of screwed in there. And then you break them off. There's little tabs for different heights. Mine, uh, I ended up breaking off both those long tube tabs. Uh, so I could drop down the tank, uh, drop down the pump to about about seven inches off, off of the top there. Uh, because the tank depth, I think, is like seven and a half inches. And then, you know, you take it in and out and you try that out. So anyway, that's what I'm doing right here. In case you're wondering, like, what exactly is he doing? It seems like he's just kind of moving around his fingers. I'm not. You know, I am kind of goofy sometimes. But, you know, that anyway, that right there is an airline tool that I had from the air the airbag setup. I just cut that, that little pickup tube. All right. So we got it all kind of cut out. And what it tells you to do is to take off this rubber flange and measure it to the bottom of the tank and then put the filter on so let's get out the rest of the stuff so there's a filter that goes on here there's actually two because it's the dual 340 so you got to pull these little caps off set this in here there's that one now we're going to measure these perfectly so to the bottom of the tank at the highest point there is exactly seven and a quarter inches. Looks like I need to go down just a half inch. Put this flange on here. All right, so you, what you do is you turn the little locking tabs and it turns out those little locking levers underneath there, which, and then you tighten it up, which pulls that pump nice and tight to your gas tank and then uh, the foam gasket fills in the little void for the ribs or whatever up to like a half inch or an inch i think whatever it is probably a half inch and so then you tighten it all down then you're all good to go and it's pretty self-explanatory once you start doing it you see and they're all set you don't have to do anything all you do is stick it in push it down and tighten it and they automatically pop out and and, and get in the right position so it's a great pump i highly recommend it Let me stand over here it'll be a little bit easier for me to see so if you look at these they have kind of like a gnarled end and then this end is different all right this is what holly recommends so this is for the outline
right, so now we gotta prep the wires for the harness on the female end. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna open up the plug. We're gonna get out the little connectors. We're gonna set the depth for this. Well, that's a little bit too deep there, so we're gonna push that up. We turned it to the 12 gauge wire. Just simple pull it out and twist it. Now we're gonna strip these off. Inside these, there's a little uh, window. You can see that the wire goes all the way in. So we're gonna put this in here. There we go. And look at that. It's really that simple. We have all four of these. All right, so you wanna know how to kind of line these up. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cheat. I'm gonna put this on here, then I can just line them up. I can take the red, and I'm gonna line it up with the red. I'm gonna push it in. I'm gonna come out here and make sure it's pushed in all the way. Then I'm gonna put it back, line it back up. It's on the very bottom. The ground goes up here, which will be the green and the black. We stick that there, pull that apart, push it through, locks it nicely. Now we're gonna do the fuel, the fuel sending unit one, line it up with the blue, push that through there, got that one, push that in a little bit further, nice and locked in. And we only have one left to do, the yellow one. Since it's a dual pump, we've got dual feeds of the pump, so I can control them separately. So my plan is to run one of the pumps at a time, and then when you go to a certain boost or when you kick on the boost, then the second pump will come on as necessary because the 340 will probably honestly power the entire engine, but I want to have the option to add the second one. So you never want to run out of fuel. So now that we have that, if you can see here, let me just show you this. See this plug now? Now we put this little thing right here, this little wedge down in there. Now to line it up, I'm going to use this, I'm going to use the needle nose pliers. Put that in there. And there we go. Boy, look at that. Boy, if that isn't a good connection, I don't know what is. All right, so now we're going to stretch these out. This black wire, the ground, I'm not going to bother running it very far because it's going to be connected to the chassis back there. It's not going to run into the car. There's no reason for it to. So what we're going to do is we'll wrap this up. And these are different size wires, so it's kind of hard for somebody to mess them up later on. The 12 gauge wires are for the tank. I mean, the, so that's, so it's gonna be kind of hard for somebody to mess this up later on. The 12 gauge wires are just for the fuel pumps and the other thinner blue wire is for the fuel sending unit. So you're gonna notice like there's two big wires and then one small wire. And then of course the black is gonna have a terminal on it which will be connected to a frame and you'll know that it doesn't run through. So it, there's not gonna be a confusion later on. All right, so we have the ground wire kind of separated now. So I'm gonna make this harness long enough to where you can drop the tank all the way to the ground, unplug it, and then cord it back up. So the tape that I use for this and all my other stuff, I think it's called Tessa tape. It's like a fabric tape. It's not the old school vinyl tape. It's just a lot more flexible. It's just a better solution for me. All right, so there we go. We've got the wiring harness all kind of made up. We've got a dual feed for the pump. So we have to where I can turn on either pump at the same time or both pumps at the same time, which is gonna be really nice. And we've got all the grounds run. We've got all the, the uh, we got the fuel level sending unit run. We have, all we have to do is cap this off, cap these off. We've got the lines for the return and, and the output to the motor. We've got the vent hose, uh, uh, the, the vent. So we have the rollover vent be on the way from Holly. We have the 10 micron filter, 175 gallons per hour coming from Holly, which should be here in just a couple days. They're really fast about shipping. And that's it, that's a wrap. We've got a nice long wire harness. There'll be more than enough. I'm sure I won't need even that much, but, and that'll just, cause all the wiring is right in the trunk. It'll feed right off the battery and be switched on with, with uh, relays. And there we go. A nice big ground that's gonna be connected right to the frame back there. All right, have a great day. All right, so check it out, there we go. Now we have all the stuff set up for the fuel. We have the dual fuel pump installed. We have the runs, we have the lines run. We have the nice solid Deutsch connectors wired up. It's gonna be a killer.
I mean, it's a monster, right? So we've got the 10 micron filter coming. That, that's the last thing to kind of finish off this, the fuel system. We have all the other stuff. We have the rollover valve coming from Holly. It's a, you know, it's just, it's got a vent and a rollover. So if the car rolls over, God forbid, fuel won't just pour out and burn me up, you know, because nobody really wants to get burned up. So there it is. Check it out. Beep, boop. Hey, thanks for, thanks for watching my videos. I really appreciate it. I really do. Have a great day. Let me know what you think.